Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I wanna show you guys how we can install Clam AV. And Clam AV is an open source antivirus kit that is actually owned by Cisco uh, now, but it's still open source and free to implement. And it supports a wide range of operating systems. So pretty much every Linux distribution and even Windows as well. Uh, and it also supports scanning multiple different file types. So here, uh, within their documentation, which I'll link in the description below, there's all these different file types and executables that Clam AV can run against to detect. And is a really good open source and antivirus solution that is pretty popular among the community and is a pretty popular open source and antivirus solution that we can deploy on our endpoints to alert us when malicious files have made their way onto one of our servers. So stick around and we'll jump into it. And all right, so here I've deployed uh, just a, a vanilla uh, CentOS 7 box. Uh, again, Clam AV supports a wide range of operating systems. So uh, I'll also do a video on Windows boxes as well. Um, so stay tuned for that, but that'll be a future video. And this one I'm just going to install on a CentOS box. So so if we go into our repo, which I'll link in the description below, I'll, uh, I've included some commands that are useful to, um, to get Clam AV installed and get us running. Clam AV does come with a handful of daemons. So for example, there's Fresh Clam, which will download our signatures, which is a which is a job that will download our signatures from Clam AV themselves. Um, so they have a signature database. Uh, if we click this guy here, that they are constantly updating new malware signatures too. And FreshClam is the tool that we can use to download the latest malware signatures so that our Clam AV is always, to, is always able to detect the uh, latest and greatest malware signatures. There is then ClamD itself, which is our multi-threaded daemon and is, is kind of the nuts and bolts of Clam AV. Uh, we'll be able to use the the ClamD daemon is able to listen for commands um, on socket, on Unix sockets, which is really helpful uh, because it allows us to run ad hoc scanning as files hit our endpoint, which I'll save for another video uh, as well. So stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and jump into it. So first we need to install the Apple release library because uh, that'll contain because that'll allow us to grab some of these other packages um, that you see here that we'll copy with the next command. So we'll go ahead and copy this guy as well and paste that in. And then once this is downloaded, we're pretty much up and ready to go with, with kind of a base install of Clam AV. Yeah, so it looks like the latest release is dot one dot oh dot four uh, which you can build from source but by default my package library is grabbing o dot one dot three dot three uh, so that's what we'll be rolling with in this video but if you want the latest and greatest you can build version one dot oh dot four um, from from source and all right so now that we got that installed let's now download our latest signatures and claim av provides an easy to use uh, binary that will do us that will do this for us. So if we just so if we just type out fresh clam and hit enter, we are now reaching out to where clam AV hosts their signature database and extracting all of those. Um, so we'll be up to date with the latest and greatest signature set. And then once this is finished, um, you know we'll want to run this fresh clam to grab the latest and greatest signature set uh, periodically. So what I like to do is just create a, a cron job that will do this for us every hour. Uh, so actually first little tip though to find out where your fresh clam binaries are located. If you just type out which fresh clam and load that, you'll see mine is, ho is stored under uh, slash bin slash fresh clam. So if I Go ahead and copy this command and we'll open our cron tab. 
E and I'll just uh, I'll make a comment uh, grab sig set I'll just say that and then I'll paste that here Ugh, and that didn't copy over very well let me backspace that and here I'll remove because my fresh clam it, uh, resides under just slash bin slash fresh clam I will remove that and then we'll use the quiet flag with it um, just so it's not out it it won't output anything within uh, as within a standard output it'll just uh, download it silently within the background so we will save that off and so now that will that job will run every hour so it'll reach out to claim ID say hey let me get the latest signature set and download them and apply them for us so now that we got that done it's now let's now start clam AV um, so first I like to add a a group and user so that clam AV can start up successfully so we can do that with just these two commands here and then if we CD into Etsy clam clam D dot D uh, we'll see our scan.com file so we go ahead and open this up oh and nano hit me again damn it's been a while <laughs> so if we open this guy up uh, these will be all of the config tweaks we can make with it these are all the configuration changes we can set for clam AV uh, if this line entry here this example isn't commented out make sure you comment it out or you can just remove it um, I also like to enable our log file so the clam D scans will output to our log file here and next, and now we need to specify because clam D if we jump back into here clam D will run as a daemon and so we'll need to enable it to listen on on either our Unix local socket or a TCP socket I like to bind it to a TCP socket so that uh, in future videos which you'll see we'll be able to use the uh, clamon ACC which is our on access scanning so we'll be able to scan files as soon as they hit our our endpoint and that'll automate that process for us but I'll save that for the next video so make sure you check that out when that drops and if we so I said I like to take advantage of the TCP port so I'll go ahead and uncomment these guys here and so here we're specifying the port. So by default, it's just 3310. Uh, this, of course, can be any port you want that is that is free and available on your server. And then we specify the address. So uh, this will just default to the local address. If you have maybe multiple interfaces on this box, you could tie it to a particular interface uh, if you'd like to. So you can make that change there. And then I also mentioned the local the local socket so if we search for that um, you'll see th these config files uh, these options here so you could bind it to either one of these um, you can't bind it to both or else or else the clamon ACC daemon which we'll run in the next video um, won't work so make sure you select one of the two and so that looks good so we'll save that out and actually one change I want to make is within fresh clam there should be a database test oh it's actually test test database so this will load the new database into memory um, and test it for you however I like to disable it just to save memory on our endpoint uh, you'll see when we start claim AV up it it actually loads all of its signatures into memory so so as soon as we start claim AV we'll see that a lot of that about 1.3 gigs of memory will be taken up by clam av um, and that and and that is responsible for holding the signatures within memory so that it can access them even when clam av isn't scanning scanning anything it'll consume that memory so i like to set this to no so that when fresh clam runs it doesn't consume uh, any more extra memory um, than it needs so uh, and this is usually pretty safe to run clam av before they post the latest signature set that users download they do a lot of testing on their own I like to set this to to know however if you are writing your own signatures and grabbing from an own 
database uh, like you can see you can specify it here so you could also write your own signatures within your environment and grab them from from a locally hosted database um, and testing it may be uh, may be efficient there just so you don't uh, incur any errors but but when I'm just trusting claim AV's database I like to set this to no so go ahead and save that and we should be now good to go uh, if I look at our scan.conf um, everything looks pretty good and so now let me actually duplicate this out to the side here and we'll see and here I'll, I'll run at htop so we can see uh, kind of memory consumption take place in in real time as claim IV st starts up so here you can see I'm not consuming much memory However, once I run our clam D, so this will start the, the clam daemon in the background for us so that we can now start to scan files. So if we run this guy, this guy's starting up and here you can see my memory, my memory is already starting to jump up. Uh, so rule of thumb and, and precaution, if by default, again, like I mentioned, this will take about 1.3 gigs of memory. Yeah, so we're, we're right around that, in, we're right around that point. So. So be cognizant of that. If you're wanting to install Clam AV on endpoints that don't already have much memory available to it, uh, you could hit some significant performance degradation uh, because it will consume this memory as it's running, uh, regardless if it's scanning or not. So just keep that in mind as a, uh, as a fair warning. So just keep that in mind so that you don't impact applications that are running on on this server so that looks good uh, and now we'll be able to run to run a scan so now that the daemon's running we'll be able to use this clamd scan command to scan files uh, to scan directories or files that we want to so here you can see their the output here and it's pretty easy so we'll uh, we'll just run a clam scan clam d scan we'll specify our option and then we'll point to our directory or file that we want to scan so let me cd i'll cd into op here uh let me grab wget real quick so we can grab some files um and let's go back to our malware repo uh let me grab one of these i'll just grab uh i'll just I'll just grab this Trojan here. So we'll grab this guy and then unzip it. Oh, unzip not found. Let me install that. And the password for this will just be infected. Um, so now our malware exists. And let's also grab just this ICAR test file. So uh, these ICAR files are non-malicious files that hit on malware signatures. So um, it's a good way to test whatever antivirus solution you're looking to deploy to make sure it's, it can detect correctly. So go ahead and grab that. Uh, looks like I need to do this no check sir flag here. All right, so now we should have all of our files here. Okay, good. And now let's run our scan. So I'll go ahead and I'll put our memory consumption again. And so again, running a scan is pretty easy. So I'll do a clam, clam D scan. And here I'll just point to the directory. So I'll say, hey, clam, clam AV, I want you to scan all the files within this ob directory, which will be uh, these few here that we just downloaded. So if we run that, Clam, uh, Clam AV comes back and outputs to and outputs to a standard output as well as uh, by default it'll do a syslog output as well. So and here we can immediately see that hey it detected it detected this win adware, so it detected that and you'll see you see the output here is found, and then it also detected our ICAR file. Uh, so that looks good. So and then if you have non malicious files in here, so I'll just do a, a uh, test.sh and I'll just say please subscribe and run that scan again you'll see that we don't we don't have any output here right so it, it didn't it, if it doesn't find 
If it doesn't detect any malicious signatures within your files, it just won't output it here. And then if we open our var log messages, we should also, if we scroll down to the bottom here, we see that it also outputs to our messages file here, uh, which is good because in a future video as well, I'll show you guys how we can configure Wazoo to actually detect on this for us. If you don't see that, uh, just make sure that it is enabled. So if you go back into your scan config, you'll see our log syslog here. Um, and by default, this just came as setting yes. They, they say default is no. So if this is commented, just make sure you uncomment it and set that value to yes. And that looks good. And so now if we look at clamd scan, let's do a help. There's a few other flags that are, um, that are nice to run. So here we see this remove flag and this removes inf infected files. You see that they state here to be careful because you know false positives do occur. So if you're looking to deploy some software or you know whatever file changes you're making on the system, if Clam AV if Clam AV falsely detects them, but you've included this remove flag, it will remove those files. Uh, so just be careful with that. But with this demo, I'll kind of I'll demonstrate it for you guys. So if we do a Clam D scan remove, and I'll specify our op directory again. Once this runs, um, you'll see that it has now found so we get the output here so it found this uh, found this malware and then it immediately removed them and same for the icar file so it found it and then immediately remo removed it and if we output our contents here you'll see we still have the zip folder that we extracted the malware from and then our, our test our test file that we created still exists because um because it wasn't removed right so let's go ahead let me grab an icar file again so I'll grab this guy again, and what's also nice to do, especially when we start to do a kind of our ad hoc scanning, we can move infected files into a directory. So let's uh, say, let's into temp here. So we have nothing here, but let's go ahead and include that flag. So I'll do clam d scan dash dash move and I'll just say temp and we'll scan the op directory and here we can see that claim AV detected our file and then it moved it into temp uh, icar and then it moved it into our temp directory so if we ls that here we see it doesn't exist but if we ls our, our temp file we see that it has moved it here so that's a good way to kind of like quarantine files, right? So if, if claim AV detects something, but you don't want it to remove it uh, because false positives can occur, uh, you wanna just move it to like a, a quarantine directory, um, you're able to do that with that flag there. And yeah, so uh, again, claim AV is a, is a pretty popular open source antivirus solution and is pretty robust and uh, has a lot of support and a big community behind it, especially now that it, 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 it is a part of the Cisco uh, suite. So I do highly recommend it again, and it is definitely an antivirus solution. I, I do recommend, and again, the port, important things to highlight is the memory consumption. Um, so just be cognizant of that especially when you start to roll out into production servers so that you don't experience any negative impacts. And then also be careful when running the remove flag, just so you don't remove any files that are crucial to your applications or whatever you're running on your servers. So that handles the manual scanning of our files. However, that's not uh, as proactive as I would like it to be. What's really nice is Clam AV supports on access scanning. So we'll be able to instruct Clam AV and say, hey, when you see a file hit the box, let's go ahead and scan it. And that'll be something that I'll cover in the next video. So stay tuned for that. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.